Hello, 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 Rent to Renters. It's Stephanie here from Rent to Rent Success. And I'm back in this series of short and sweet videos with lots of value in little time. And we're answering your questions. So today's question is from Corbin. And it is all about um, whether you should take on an existing HMO or whether you should take on a house and convert it to an HMO. And I'm just going to quickly read out Corbyn's question, which is gaining planning permission in HMO Article 4 areas, the general advice is to steer clear and to market to existing landlords, but it appears that some people have successfully gained planning and converted from C3 to C4. So Corbyn, there's a few things to consider. Um, firstly, it's whether you need planning. Now, if you need planning, that's a that can be a very lengthy process so you need to understand your local area and if you need planning what's the likelihood you would get planning what's going to happen in the meantime while you go through that long process so in our area you need to get planning to convert from c3 to c4 so to go from house to hmo um so therefore we don't do that for our rent to rent properties we market and only work with existing hmo properties but as you say there's lots of um, people doing it where they're converting houses to HMOs and typically that will be in areas where they don't require planning so that's fine you just bring the property up to the HMO licensing standard the HMO licensing team give it the sample of approval and away you go um, so the way to decide if that is worthwhile doing um, it's is you do the deal analysis so on some occasions, the landlord might be prepared to pay for those changes, but or, or might go halves with you. Often, the benefit of taking on a house is that typically, or in some areas, the rent will be lower as a single house than it will be as an HMO. So there's more upside for you, and you'll still be able to give the property owner a great rent as well. Um, so it's just who's making the investment up front, and you can negotiate that and then go ahead and either the landlord does the work or you organize the work and he pays. You know, there, there's all different ways you can work it out. Um, but the, the number one thing to really pay attention to is does the deal stack with the additional investment from the HMO, any monies that you need to pay to make the deal work, does it work? And if the deal still works, you would still go ahead and go from a house to HMO. And if the deal doesn't work, you'd walk away. Um, so I think it the answer is it depends on your area. If your area requires planning to convert to HMO, then typically that process is too long for most uh, rent to renters to want to get involved in. Um, but if it doesn't involve planning, then why not go ahead if the if the deal stacks? It's very important. We've we've put the deal analysis out there free um, for you to use, and um, I've got links across to the training, the free training. Um, but we also have our paid Kickstarter coaching course if you want more uh, details analysis of all your deals. If, if what's stopping you from starting in rent to rent is not knowing whether the deals stack, um, then one of the things that we do do on that course is you can submit all your deal analysis beforehand and we'll go through the deal and uh, give you feedback on it and make sure that every deal is going to be profitable. For you all right uh, if you are watching on uh, remember to join our rent to rent success secrets Facebook group and also subscribe to our rent to rent success a YouTube channel I will see you all again soon if you have a question for me just ask it either in the Facebook group or in the YouTube channel okay see you soon bye for now